The number of people affected daily by miscarriage is staggering, and there's still such a silence about it. Such a confused bundle of feelings of shame, along with the grief. And so this series of the Fertility Podcast is called We Need to Talk About Miscarriage, where we hear from a number of experts talking about the impact this loss has on our lives and how we can support anybody going through it. Please note, this trailer does have some sensitive conversations in it, so if it doesn't feel right for you, you don't need to listen. I am an obstetrician and gynaecologist at Imperial College Healthcare Trust, and I took some time out of my training to do some research looking at the psychological impact of early pregnancy events, including miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy. We'd sent women questionnaires to fill in one month, three months, and nine months after an early pregnancy loss, asking about symptoms relating to anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress, and we were looking at how high those levels are. The sort of scariest statistic, really, from the whole thing was that at nine months, one in six women are still reporting significant symptoms suggestive of post-traumatic stress, um, which if you think how common miscarriage is, how profound implications post-traumatic stress has, it's a pretty scary kind of public health concern. As well as hearing from you, your stories. I was nine weeks pregnant and a few weeks before, so about six, nearly seven weeks, I'd started spotting and I went to the hospital and they did a scan and they found the heartbeat and said everything's fine. And the nurses said to me at the time, they said, actually, if we can hear a heartbeat and we found it, everything's usually fine and you're usually all right after that. But then the bleeding didn't stop. Went to my first meeting with the midwife and told her that I was still bleeding. And they were like, oh, no, it's fine. Everything should be all right. Sometimes it just happens. A bit blase about it. And then it got to Christmas Eve, but there was a lot more that I was experiencing in terms of blood loss and... Um, it was that point that I thought something's not right. And then what that's led you on to do, supporting others, helping them understand what they're going through because you've been through it yourself. Amazing people that we want to bring together so you know what is available should you find yourself in this situation. Know that you're not alone. Four hours later, you know, emergency operation. My baby was trapped in my left fallopian tube, so I had the baby removed with the tube and came round. The care I received at Ormsgate Hospital was absolutely first class. I was in overnight, but I had nothing with me because I was rushed in an ambulance. And I woke up from the theatre and, God, I just wanted to brush my teeth. I feel awful emotionally. I just want to brush my hair. I want to feel a bit better. I didn't want my husband to leave me, so I didn't let him leave me, so I didn't have anything with me. So that's why we've started the Comfort Bag project, so that in those moments, those early moments of early pregnancy loss, particularly when you've had medical or surgical management, we give anybody who's there in those moments the opportunity to have dignity and just a little bit of comfort. And know that change makers are speaking to the decision makers to make sure they understand what it is you need, what it is you are going through, and they are being heard. Over 80% of loss doesn't even make it into a hospital setting. So then it's GPs and nurses and nurse practitioners and surgeries that are actually looking after people. So we've got to better the care, not only in the hospital setting, also in the community. And that's part of the government review work that I'm doing. It's who actually comes into contact with people who encounter loss. How do we train them better? How do we change the language they're using? How do we become patient-led? To hear the full series, make sure you subscribe via your podcast app or visit thefertilitypodcast.com.